Hi everyone. So we're gonna start our fall art project. The first thing you wanna do is write your name on the back of each watercolor paper. Name and room number, please. Okay, so we are gonna create some watercolor blotches on each of these pages. I'm gonna start on this page first. And I'm just gonna kind of blend all those beautiful fall colors. Got your browns and reds oranges and yellows. We want this to be really rustic looking. So there's really no wrong or way, wrong or right, right way to do this. Now I've got one fourth of the page done right now. And this is what I want you to do. Here is some salt. And we're gonna just create a little bit of texture in our watercolors by adding some salt and then also with some rubbing alcohol and a q-tip i'm gonna make these like little blotches here see that okay so i'm going to move along the page just like that whoops i don't know how that blue got in there i'm going to cover it up with some brown There's really no wrong or right way to do the watercolors. I just want this to look really rustic and I want it to kind of blend in. To give this a little bit of a fall look, see how I'm using all of the different colors and I'm just kind of like blending them together somewhat. Okay, there's another fourth of my page done. I'm gonna add a little more texture with my salt. It's gonna give it more of a, a rough look. And then I'm gonna take my Q-tip and add the splotches. See how it kind of gives the watercolors more texture? All right, moving on to another portion of my page. We are not shooting for perfection here. I always say there is no room for perfection in art. Art is pretty much like perfectly imperfect, if you ask me. Everyone just kind of goes with it and puts their own little spin on it. Just like that. Okay, so I've got another portion of my paper done. That needs a little more brown. Maybe that's too much though. Now what you can do is kind of blotch it a little bit. If you used too much watercolors, you can blot it with a paper towel or your finger like I'm doing right now. No biggie. You can always add another watercolor too. Okay, so now we have another portion done. Oh, isn't that cool? I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Okay, now we're going to do the final part of our watercolors on this side anyway. I'm 
like so. You feeling the fall vibes? All right. And then finally, I'm gonna add my texture on this side with a little salt and rubbing alcohol. Okay, that part is over. I'm gonna set this aside to dry. Now I've got these fall leaf templates. And I'm basically gonna do the same thing that I did, but on a smaller scale, because I'm just gonna kind of like, well, actually, no, I'm gonna color the whole page and you'll see why in a minute. So go right over the template. We're not coloring them or anything. Okay. See how I'm doing some blending here in the middle? I wanna make sure that my leaves there in the middle have some contrast. Don't think too much about it. Don't overthink it because usually the best, um, the best watercolors just turns out organically, like naturally. So don't overthink it, just go with it, okay? See how I'm adding like little colors here and there to my leaves because we are definitely going to do something with those. And while my paper is still wet, you don't have to do this, but if you wish, I'm going to take a little bit more of that alcohol And kind of dab again to create that rustic fall rugged feel to give it a little more dimension and add a little salt Okay, so that is done for now. And I'm also gonna set this aside for a moment. Now in the middle of our fall scene that we're creating here, we can either choose to put a black cat or a gray squirrel, okay? Now, the first thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out both of these, but first you wanna trace the black cat pattern, which I'll show you on the board, the whiteboard. And we have a squirrel pattern like this, a gray squirrel, which I ran out of gray paper, so I had to color in a different piece of paper. Never mind that. Okay, so tracing the black cat, the little legs, and her tail, eyeballs. I'm gonna borrow some black paper for to give to my friend for their squirrel eyes. Okay. 
Next, I'm gonna cut this out, and this might take a little time with my scissors. I'm gonna cut this out. Again, this, this is not the time to be perfect. Gonna cut out my little black cat. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. And then I'm gonna cut out these eyes. My kitty is going to have some staring eyes, and I'll show you how to make these in just a moment. The eyes are going to have a yellow perimeter or golden perimeter on the outside. Watch how I do this. that with my glue stick I'm gonna glue the eyeballs on actually and then I'm gonna cut out the golden or yellow perimeter my kitty's gonna have big nighttime staring eyes, okay? Just like that. Now I'm gonna glue these eyes on to my little guy. Okay, so I'm gonna set my kitty aside for a sec. And now we're gonna move on to the squirrel option. Again, your art helper or teacher will trace the perimeter. cutting out some squirrel eyes from that black paper that I had left over from my cat. Okay. Squirrel has a very bushy tail, perky ears. Okay, now I'm gonna cut this out. And while the while, while we're doing this step, our watercolors are hopefully starting to dry. If you haven't completely saturated your paper, they should dry faster. You might need to blot it with a paper towel. Again, this can be rustic. It does not have to be perfect at all. Okay, so here's my squirrel. And I'm gonna take my little beady eyes. There we go. Q 
cute little squirrel. Okay, now if you have any kind of water or salt or alcohol on your table, this is, would, would be a great time to take your paper towel, give everything a good wipe down with the paper towel, dust that salt off, you can put your watercolors aside. We are all done with those. Okay, so I've got my watercolor and I've got my leaves, okay? My papers are still a little bit damp, but that's okay. We are going to cut pretty carefully our leaves. Now this I would be a little delicate with seeing as though these are crispy fall leaves you kind of want to make sure all the little edges are in there. Now don't crumble up the leftover paper because we are going to be doing something with that paper. Okay. Okay, there is one leaf. Now don't crumble up this other portion because what we're going to do is take our leaves and trace extra. Like maybe, you know, however many leaves you want, you're going to trace extra of all of these different types. Okay? And cut those out because we're going to use every last bit of this paper. That way we're recycling. We're not wasting anything. And then our leaves are small enough to fit on our other watercolor page here. Okay. Everyone with me so far? Now this will take a little time and that's okay. We don't really want to rush through this. We want to enjoy the process, right? See how careful I'm being with the rest of the paper? And as you notice, I am not cutting these perfectly. I'm keeping this kind of rustic. There, set that aside.
Okay, so I've got my five patterns here, but I have all this lovely rustic watercolor fall colors here that I want to use. So I am going to trace with my pencil pretty lightly some extra leaves. And again, these can be as rustic as you want or if you don't even want to use the templates, you can just draw your own, create your own, it's fine with me. So I've got a good amount of leaves going on here. I think I want another maple one. I know we don't see too many fall leaves here in California, Southern California. We have to kind of drive a little bit to get our fall atmosphere, but that's kind of fun, right? All right, I'm gonna do just a couple more. Now, it will take some time to cut the remainder of these leaves So your teacher can pause this video and um, maybe decide to do the other part of this at a later time, or if you have time, you can continue. But we're gonna cut these leaves in just a minute. <clears throat> now what we can do is we can take our little animal and we can paste it onto our main watercolor page. I would put it like right at the center, just like that. Okay. Just cutting a few more leaves and again these are not like the perfect templates you can afford to be a little rustic with this because we don't want our leaves all looking the same right see these look a little bit different and that's okay so now I'm gonna take my leaves and kind of surround my little kitty in all the leaves. Like peekaboo. Okay, now I'm gonna cut some more. Again, you can pause the video and finish cutting and turn it back on if you'd like. 
while you're working on this part. How's everyone doing? See, even if it goes off the page a little bit, that's okay. Put this one there now hmm I've got one more and I don't know I might decide to do something else with the scrap paper glue this scrap paper on and pretend like it's like more leaves. What do you think? I think that works. these edges so I think that really works
Hmm, I think I could fit one more leaf over here. See, I just had a little bit of scrap paper left, so I'm basically spontaneously making another leaf. Since I had this space, I'm gonna put it in the corner there. You can even like cut out some littler ones, be fine. Okay, that is it, everybody. See, there's some layers here. There's a rustic quality. And our little kitty cat is peeking out from his little fall forest. Equally cute, don't forget about the squirrels. That's gonna look good too. Okay, everybody, have fun.